guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. We just saw part one last week, or a few days ago, and now we're going to focus on part two of three. So part two is focusing on the grasses in this cheetah painting. So our grass is that tall, dry grass, and it's just kind of at sunset time, so it has all of that same golden brown warm orange hues that we see in the sky as well. I kind of carried that down into the grass too. So today we're going to use different brushes to create different textured looks for the grass. We're also going to learn about how we layer the grass to make it look like this grass back here is much farther away from this grass up here. Okay, so just a recap from last week. First, we sketch out the scene uh, just to get everything figured out. We get the body of the cheetah down. I used the grid method so I knew my proportions were accurate. Once I had the cheetah sketched out, I put a horizon line behind him to separate the sky from the grass. So we worked on the sky last week. Now we're going to work on the grass. For painting the grass, the first step I wanted to do was just get all that white off the canvas. I wanted to create a warm brown base color that's kind of a middle tone between the shadow and the highlight color for the grass. And I just went and completely covered the whole grass section right up to the cheetah's body, covering up little bits of the cheetah's body too uh, around that borderline just to make sure I didn't leave any white space there. And I'm just using a large flat tipped brush for this. The bottom parts of the cheetah are also kind of covered by the grasses, so I covered up the bottom part of the cheetah's legs. And here you see I filled in a base color for the cheetah. We're going to focus on that more next week. But coming back to the grass, after I let that base layer of paint dry, I first started to add a shadow color. And I'm still using my large flat tipped brush here. And you can see the angle that I'm holding it at. I'm holding it so that I can get nice long strands of grass there. I thin down the paint a bit so you can see it's becoming a little bit translucent. And that's okay because we're going to do a lot of layering. The most important thing is to thin down your paint a little bit so that you can get those nice uh, well-defined lines uh, that you can really manipulate the paint to do what you want with the brush. Uh, if you don't water it down, then it's going to get like a more textured, thick look and you're going to have like bits where it doesn't look smooth. It'll look a little bit more rough and we want to have a nice smooth grassy look here, especially for the grasses in the far background. So I just do that. Uh, this is a mixture of burnt umber and maybe a bit of dioxazine purple and a little bit of burnt sienna as well. Uh, maybe a hint of black in there too. You just want to get like a dark, uh, not super warm base color for your shadow. Uh, and then you just kind of start making those up and down brush strokes in the background. Next, I took an even darker color just by adding a little more black and brown, maybe a hint of phthalo blue too, and just uh, brushed at the bottom there without creating any new like spikes of grass coming up into the uh, sky, uh, but just to kind of fuzz up that horizon line a little bit so it's not just a solid line like I started out with. Now I'm starting to blend a highlight color, and first I'm going to focus on the highlighted grass that is between us and that sun-lit sky. So this is going to be the warmest part of the grass, Whenever the sun is behind grass or trees and it's setting and it's like you're looking at the sun through that piece of nature, <laughs> it warms up the grass or the trees or whatever you're seeing in front of it. So we're going to include more reds and yellows in here to warm up those grasses. And I'm just putting a nice highlight layer right over top of that first shadow. And still not trying to go too crazy here with the amount of grasses that I'm putting in. I want to leave that gap of space between it where we can still see the lit sun area behind it. Uh, you want to have like a just a bunch of little strands of grass. You don't want to have it look like a solid line with a jagged edge, if you get what I mean by that. And I did switch to a liner brush here. This is a thicker liner brush, so it has a longer bristles of a uh, hair and it's a little bit thicker than my really fine liner brushes so 
because of this is an 18 inch by 24 inch canvas, I was using a larger liner brush. Uh, if I was using an 8 by 10 inch canvas, then I would definitely go to a fine liner brush. So we got that layer of highlights down. Now we're building up another layer of shadows, starting to move closer to the foreground, and our grasses are coming lower. On, if we're looking from top to bottom on the canvas, our grasses are starting to come lower towards the bottom of the canvas, and the top part of these grasses are not as tall as that first layer we put down there. So we're starting to make our way closer to the foreground by moving farther down from top to bottom on the canvas. And we're going to keep doing the same process over and over again where we add a shadow layer and then we add a highlight layer on top of the shadows. Add another round of shadows, another round of highlights. We are going to add some mid-tones in there as well where we start to mix in uh, some more warm and cool hues that are like in the middle level of highlight to shadow. Uh, just to get a broader range of color so that our grass doesn't look flat. But here you can see me going back with the second layer of highlights. And we also, when we're painting grass and we're using a liner brush like this, you kind of make like a round motion. You don't just have like a straight up and down jagged line, like a vertical line for your grasses, because the wind is blowing these grasses, they're growing in different directions, um, different things run through them that make them kind of bend over, so the grass isn't all perfectly vertical and straight. So when you're painting your grass, you have the freedom to just kind of let the brush make little, like, see how I'm making those random little shapes? You, you can do whatever little shapes you want, like arcs, little bends, you could do like a straight line for some of them. Just make sure they're not all facing the same direction and it'll start to look more realistic. Here I'm starting to add one of those layers of middle tones. This is kind of uh, lighter than my darkest shadow color, but it's still pretty much on the cooler side. Uh, and I'm just adding this layer in front of that. Last layer I just did, continuing to make my lines come down farther than the layer behind it, coming closer to the foreground. Now I'm adding a little highlight on that. Thinning down the paint here so I get those nice smooth lines and just continuing this layer across the canvas. Here I'm switching back to a flat tipped brush, this is a medium sized flat tip brush, and I'm putting a another little base color here just to kind of fuzz up the bottom and make it nice and dark to build up my next layer of paint. So I put that middle tone in there, now I'm starting to add a shadow on top of that, uh, just in random little spots there, pulling the paint up and the same grassy style where the brush is creating those little thin lines and I'm just pulling that down farther and farther putting a little bit right behind the cheetah there too creating more of a shadow and the same thing on the right side of the cheetah so as our grasses are coming farther down towards the ground, like the base part of the grasses, they're in shadow more. So this is helping us to build that look of the grasses being darker at the base and getting lighter as they're coming up into the, up at, closer to the sky. Uh, so 
just putting that base sh shadow layer down and then putting highlights over top of it and then putting another shadow at the base and kind of like working it up helps to create that look. As we keep moving forward, you can start to notice that there's a little bit more color showing up in my highlights now. You don't want to use the same color for your grass highlights for the whole entire field of grass. You want to have some grasses with, that are a little warmer, some that are a little cooler. So you can see some of them have a little more burnt sienna in them, some of them have a little bit more cadmium yellow medium, some of them have a little bit more burnt umber. Just kind of play around, maybe create three or four different colors for your highlights and middle tones and work with those. Uh, because we're using acrylic paint, the paint's going to dry more quickly, so keep that in mind too when you're mixing your paint. And if you start to notice that your highlights are all starting to blend together or one area seems to have too many shadows and just like is standing out to you and it doesn't look realistic, then you can always go back and just start to rework a couple little grass sections where you can make some new grass uh, brush strokes and just like create that better highlight look or make the colors a little bit more true to what you're hoping to get. So you're not stuck once you create a layer and move forward. You can always go back and just start to add a couple little grasses in that back layer. Just don't pull the brush down quite as far uh, so that it still looks like it's in that back layer. Working around the cheetah's body can be a little bit more tricky because you don't want to go too far over the cheetah's body and kind of forget where your boundaries were there. Uh, so I recommend putting your shadow color to go right up to the base of the body and then adding your highlights over it that uh, can kind of cover over the body a little bit because we're going to cover over those highlights later anyway. So just pretend like the cheetah's body is not there for the highlight section, uh, but try to keep that border around the cheetah's body for the shadows, just so that you still don't quite lose your border. Here I realized that I made the tail just a little bit too thick, so I'm fixing up the base of that tail there too with a little bit more uh, of a shadow color. So here's where you can see my highlights are just going right over the cheetah's body and I'm just kind of pretending that the cheetah's not there. So that's how we keep the grasses looking realistic around the figure. Same thing with the parts of the grasses that are going to be in front of the cheetah. Uh, for now we're just covering up the cheetah and pulling those strands of grass up in front of the body and then we are we're going to end up painting over that because we have to put the detail into the cheetah but then after we paint the cheetah we come back and we'll finish the grass as we keep moving closer to the foreground our blades of grass are getting taller and thicker 
and that is how we create the distance in the grass. Um, we are making our lines longer here, so especially when you're starting to get right up in the foreground at the bottom of your canvas, you want your blades of grass to be twice as long, at least, uh, than your blades of grass that are in the far background right in front of that sun. So keep that in mind too when you're making your blades of grass. You also want, might want to put a little bit more pressure onto the canvas using that liner brush just to create a thicker line uh, that will make your blades of grass also look larger in the foreground. And once you get to the bottom of the canvas, then you just add that layer of highlights. You start to add some more thick blades of grass, another round of like bright little highlights on top of that. And you're going to start to have some highlights that are just kind of on individual blades of grass where the entire blade of grass is not a highlight. Uh, there's enough detail in the foreground that we can distinguish a highlight on a single blade of grass. So you can add a base, a uh, tone, like middle tone for a blade of grass and then add a highlight on like a little section of that uh, just to make it stand out a little bit more and get things a little more detailed right in the foreground. And like I'm, st I'm still doing those crisscross patterns and the little uh, rounded patterns. If you get like a blob of paint on there by accident, then that's easy to cover up. All you gotta do is put a shadow color right over that mess up that you made and then just add some more highlights on top of it. So it's really easy to fix any mistakes with your blades of grass. Once I got that whole round of grass down, it was time to come back and add an additional round of highlights on top of everything just to make the grass stand out a little bit more, make it look less flat, uh, make it look like we have some light still reaching these blades of grass. So I'm just going around there with my liner brush, adding more highlights. Uh, there's some bronze yellow in here, some cadmium yellow medium, white, maybe a hint of burnt sienna. And I kind of blended it around too. I didn't use the same color for the whole area of highlights. And the final step, once we had the cheetah completely done, is to add an additional round of highlights with some really beautiful tall blades of grass right in front of the cheetah's legs and make those blades of grass the thickest and the tallest out of all the other blades of grass and kind of let that color fade into more of the blades of grass farther in the background and carry off into the distance to really bring this all to life. So the way we did our grass was pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of layering. So we start with the shadow layer first in the far background using small thin blades of grass. Then we add a highlight round on top of that. Then we start to move forward with another layer of shadows, another layer of highlights. And then we start to also incorporate some middle tones in there as we keep moving forward with our layers. And then after we get that whole layer done, we go back with another round of highlights just to brighten things up. We can touch up some spots where it seems to draw attention or it doesn't seem right. And then after your subject is painted and you wanna add the blades of grass in the very foreground, we just add those using our liner brush as well. And we have the grass. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments for me, then just leave a comment below this video and I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, stick around for part three coming up next week. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. That is where we're going to focus on the cheetah, which is by far the most difficult part of this painting. So <laughs> if you're looking for a challenge, that's going to be the challenging part of this painting for you. See you guys next time. Thanks for joining me today and happy painting. Bye bye.